Good evening, and welcome to Shay Show Real Talk in the Dark. Yes, it is back. Barbara Alexander been waiting a long time for Shay Show Real Talk in the Dark. She be texting me all the time and says, Shay, please do it in the dark. I miss those. And again, I have to say this for all the new people coming in and listening to this or trying to watch this or you're going to say, why are you in the dark? Every fucking time it never fails. Somebody come in here and say, why in the fuck I'm in the dark? And, and, I, and I said it all the time. It's called, if it's called Shayshow Real Talk in the Dark, I mean, goddamn, that's a clue. Instead of coming in and asking the same shit you just read. Oh, anyway, <clears throat> I am laying here in the bed because when I do these real talks, I'm actually in the bed getting ready to go to sleep. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Laying across, just got out the shower, lotioned up, put a little smell good on behind the ear, one little dab here. Just enough, just enough to hit the pillow and that fresh scent is vibrating through the air while you just lay there. You got the fan on, on low. You turn it on and you just lay there and let the air from the fan ravage your body. And put you in deep thought and say, I'm comfortable right now. Well, that's what it is for me. Just the way I explained it. So, it's like, we're just going to sit here and have pillow talk. Maybe you're at home right now. It's late. And you're in bed right now. You just got out the shower. You turn that fan on low and put a little dab of perfume on behind your ear. Mm-hmm. And we're just sitting here just having pillow talks. Sometimes it's about just talking. Sometimes just when two people lay in the bed, don't mean they go out. They always got the fuck. And yes, I said it. I said the word. Because it's a shame show real talk in the dark. Y'all know what this is already. I'm just going to say what's on my mind. And if it comes out a certain way, you po- you supposed to understand who I am already. So, there it is. But everybody like to have a little pillow talk from time to time. Just, just laying there and just, just talking. Just talking. You know, me and Pam used to do that all the time. We used to lay in the bed and just fucking talk. I mean, actually fucking talk and communicate. A lot of people in relationships, they don't do that. That's why relationships don't last no more. They don't. Everybody everybody lost sight why you was there in the first fucking place. People feel like, figuring like, okay, I got them or I got her. And you don't have to keep doing the same shit to keep them. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you sit here and wonder why the relationship ain't work out, all you got to do is go back to the beginning and see how you started and where you are right now. You got your answer. So, yeah, we always just talk, talk, because when we first got together, that's what we did. We would just walk and talk, just talk about everything, whatever came up. You know, and then 30 years later, still just doing the same thing. That's why it lasted so long. Because what we did from the beginning, we continued to do throughout. Never changed up. That what makes a good relationship. When people say, Shay, talk about relationships. Well, I pretty much say the same thing all the time. All the time. But I don't mind repeating myself because sometimes sometimes somebody need to hear this shit. <clears throat> you know, just 
you got to know how to give a person space sometime too. That's a big part of a relationship. You just can't always be under each other. You know, even though you might have started off that way, but that's one of the things that you shouldn't do is just always be under each other. No matter how much fucking love you. I, I love her to death. She loved me to death. God damn it. We still need a break from time to time. We still have to be who we are. You still can't take away from yourself and give everything to everybody else. You just can't do that. You know, you still have to find time for you. And that person knows that. And you know that. Once you go into the, with that understanding, there, there's no problem. It's not that you separating or not talking or just like I'm mad. No, it's just like, like perfect example. Because we talk so much, I realized that she had to have her time to do whatever it is she needed to do too. Didn't have nothing to do with me personally. Nothing. I was sitting up front one day watching television. It was like, I don't know, about probably 8 o'clock, closer to 9 o'clock. <clears throat> and she was in the back, in the room, you know, with the door closed. <clears throat> well, I kind of knew what was going on. Because when she do that, you know, it's just it's like her time. You know, so I went back there one day to, to go in the room to get something. So I knocked on the door because I knew already. And she said, come on in. My wife told me to come into my own fucking room. Anyway, I mean, I still gave that much respect. Just because it was my wife and that was our room, I mean, the door was closed. I mean, you know, you still deserve some type of fucking privacy. I don't even care. I don't care how long you've been fucking together. Just do that. Just, you know, it's, just, it's a common thing. It's okay. It's crazy. Anyway, I knocked on the door. Come on in. And I noticed. I said, oh, my bad. She said, what? What? I said, you you reading your Bible because she, ha- she would have her legs crossed on the bed with a Bible and a highlighter and there's a headlight because <laughs> he kept the light out and shit. So he had this headlight and she was just, she was like highlighting scriptures, you know? And I said, I said, I just came to get something real quick and I'm out your hair. So, I mean, I got whatever I got, walked out and gave her that space because I knew already. That wasn't nothing to be mad about. Just everybody need they, they space to do what they need to do for them, you know. And the same thing with me. I go down in the basement, <clears throat> and I was um. We was totally opposite. I'm telling you, I'd be down in the basement on Sing Snap. I was on Sing Snap before I came to YouTube, so I've been on social media since 2006. So I got records <coughs> over at singsnap.com. And that's where the Shay Show came from over there. Because I was like this internet, I was trying to be this internet DJ all over on Sing Snap. And what I would do, I would sing. <clears throat> but what I would do, I would go to different people's pages and I would feature them on my page. Like right now, it'd be like in the dark. And and it, it might be my boy Shy Shy Town Jab. He's a guy in Chicago. I call him my big brother. When I first got to uh, Sing Snap, you know, I started making some recordings, and then he started um, commenting to my recordings, and then I would go to his page and listen to him. And so we just started talking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and we talked so much and did so many songs together. He said, man, call me one day, man. I'm in, he said, I'm in Chicago. I know you're in Detroit. You know, and I called him, and we just talked on the phone. We just, you know, had a good conversation. Like, I've known the brother for for like years, and I met him right there. And so that's where the Shay Show thing came from. I, and I featured him and um, um, Ohio Peach. If you ever go to com, Ohio Peach, she lives in uh, Georgia, uh, Warner, what is that? Warner Robbins, Georgia. And <clears throat> we was really big friends on uh, Sing Snap. Sing Snap to me was like Facebook or something. It's just like I had this connection with a lot of people on that site. And so I used to listen to her record. She listened to mine. And I started calling her my little sister. 
And so we've been talking back and forth, back and forth. And so I go to Georgia quite a bit at that time. And I said, listen, I'm going to be in Georgia, me and Pam on vacation. You know, let me know if we can uh, hook up. You know, maybe we can all go out to dinner or something. I'll meet her for the first time. And uh, she texted me back and said, yeah, I'm in Warner Robins, Georgia, me and my husband. He know all about you. He's looking forward to meet you, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, cool. So we got in the car, and Pam said, how far is this place? I said, one, I said two hours from, from Atlanta, two hours. She said, oh. I said, Just, I know you like enjoying the ride. So we rode out there to her house, beautiful house. And her husband's retired Air Force. They had a dog named Pepper. He passed away. And uh, fixed dinner, and we had a good time. We did some sing snap. We did some sing snap right there at her table, and everything it was just. I had a really great time. But anyway, that's where the Shea Show was born. So I was known as the Shea Show over there uh, on SingSnap.com, and that's when I accidentally brought it here. So when I started doing videos here in 2008, that's when the market had crashed. And all the houses was like selling for like a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, you know. And so I was looking around at some different properties, and um, it was this four unit that was for sale for a thousand dollars in my first video. And I told Royce when we was driving, because he was driving, I said, you know, I always want to put something on YouTube, that new thing. I said, but uh, you know, I don't know what to do and and what I should do. But one day I want to do that. One day I kept telling him, one day I want to be able to put something on YouTube because it was new. Because new YouTube came out in two thousand five, so it was still kind of new, at least to me, because I hadn't used it yet. And he pulls over. I said, "What the fuck are you doing?" He said, "I'm pulling over." I said, "What?" He said, we're going to do a video for YouTube. I said, a video of what? <laughs> First thing I fucking said, a video of what? He said, houses. That's what you want to do. We out here looking at them. He said, say something about them. I said, say what? I was totally confused because he just came up with this shit at the last minute. and just He just threw this shit in my face. I almost broke down and said, no, nah, I wanted to let him get back in the car. But he kept pushing me. He said, this house is $1,000. Talk about it. I said, what the fuck to say about it? He said, just be yourself. Just say the house is a thousand dollars, you know, just riding by and looking at it and, you know, could be a good deal, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay. So he turned the camera on and I'm like, I was kind of like baffled. Like, I just really didn't know what the fuck to say because it was new. That was my very first video. He said, and uh, I started saying, hey, this is Shay from the Shay Show and and we at this house, it's a thousand dollars, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I started talking and I heard a gunshot in the background. I kind of ducked in the video. I kind of ducked and shit. I said, the fuck out of here, right? And so after I wrapped up the video, we got in the car and I said, you got to uh, d delete that video. Don't post that. He said, why not? I said, because I said Shay from the Shay Show. I said, what the fuck they got to do with it? A house and real estate. That sounds stupid. He said, keep saying it. I'm not going to erase it. Keep saying it. He said, it's going to stick. I said, it sounds like shit. You going to make me like a fucking fool on the internet. I'm saying, shake from the shade show. And I'm showing damn houses. That said, the two don't match. He said, listen, from now on, whenever you do a video, just say that. Keep saying the shade show. He said, trust me. He said, I went to school for marketing. Just let me do what I got to do. You just, you just keep saying it. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. And so, yeah. And so the Shea Show was born based on that. Because he said, keep doing it. And I didn't want to do it. I truly didn't want to do it. But I did. So, yeah, so... People just need to, see, I just went on the tantrum, but people just need to just find time for themselves. You know, just, it's good. That will help the relationship really uh, get back on track. You know, if you just kind of like go back to the beginning. And I know it's hard because, you know, especially for people who've been together, like, you know, if you've been together over a fucking year, it starts there. It starts there. And then when they get into the fifth and the tenth year, 
oh, it gets really even fucking harder. It do. It really do. And when it gets to 30 years, oh, baby, you have to fight just as hard. You miss, Do you see my point? See, all those years, each year to go by that you're with somebody, then there's something about them that's not going to be the fucking same. Something's going to change. When you get into that fifth year, if you make it, something's going to change when you look at that person. Something about that person is going to change. They're going to start looking different at some point. They might start talking a little different at some point. You know who they are, but something's going to change. And Lord have mercy, that Coke bottle, the beautiful body that you've seen, it was like 36, 24, 36. Now it's, uh, now it's a 64 double Z and uh, size 32 and the, the ways and blah, blah, blah. Just... You know, it, it happens. I mean, once a, once a girl used to have a really nice bra, now she got a fucking harness on. You don't see trying to, <laughs> she got her harness on. This ain't like all that shit no more. All that shit that was staying that tension at one time and shit like, whoop, shit. Like one of them fucking women in fucking Africa, y'all shit just off nipples, paste it to your fucking navel and shit. Just, damn. But that happens. It happens. Life happens. And you just have to be strong to maintain a really good relationship because a relationship going to face so many challenges. It's going to be so much shit that's going to be thrown your way. Temptation is going to be coming a mile a fucking minute. And you might even fucking slip. Some of you have slipped. But it's okay. Because, I mean, that's the way a lot of shit was fucking designed. You know, it, a lot of shit was designed that way. I just felt that, <clears throat> for me, I could just be a little bit stronger in my mind. In my mind. Because I know temptation is out here. I know it is. Look at Adam and Eve. What was Adam told to do? Not to do. What did he have told not to do? And who fucks him up? A woman. That Listen, that's what y'all do. It goes back to the beginning of the time. I'm going to fucking tell it. Go all the way. Hey, Adam, you know, go ahead. You know, get some of that damn apple dog. Just, you know, think about making some, you know, some apple pie and shit, you know. Just, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I can't do that shit. And then I'll call, yeah, you can. Stop playing. Why are you playing? You know what? And he went out and he went down there to fucking Victoria's Secret and shit. Got some shit and like, yeah. And she came back and shit. She like, he went up there, click it. it. Happens every time. But no. You have to be really sincere and working really hard when it comes to relationships. Because, you know, and friends. Then the ones who gonna fuck you every fucking time. Them so called fucking friends, they don't get middle of your shit. It always be the ones who ain't got no goddamn body. Why is it? It's the one who ain't got no fucking body trying to get some fucking advice. Then have three marriages and two divorces and and five baby mamas. So the fuck I'm trying to get advice from somebody like that for? But y'all be listening to people like that. You right, girl. Every time that fucks you up. Don't never let nobody in the middle of your relationship. It's it's hazardous. It really is. Don't 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 be telling your girlfriend or your or your man about your relationship and man that motherfucking bitch man man they piss me off. You know what that bitch did last night, man. What she do, man? What she do, man? You know what she did, man? You know she did the unthinkable, man. She, I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I know what you're saying, man. No, what you saying, man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. That is fucked up, ain't it, man? Man, yeah, man. But she, she know now. I bet she do. Mm hmm. Ain't none of that shit made sense. But that's how that shit work. <laughs> that would be going on all the fucking time. So. Be careful of your so-called friends in your relationship. Because sometimes people don't mean you no good. They really don't. They know you so fucked up. You, they don't even see 
that you you putting the shit to them. You trying to get to what they got really got. Some of you out there trying to get, man, fucked. You know, girls just fuck that motherfucker. Blah blah blah. You know, so you be you, you need to be able to real man. That when that shit come in, then you know what they're doing at that point. You know, you right, you right, Pookie. You know, and then she started fucking around with Pookie, and that's his best friend and stuff. Man, I don't know why Pookie we should change it. I don't know, man. Why you think she changing like that, man? You my main man. You know, let me know. Give me some good advice, man. You know how I feel for her. Man, if I was you, man, you know, I get it. But, like, you know, just, you know, I would just let her go, man. If it's all like that, you know what I'm saying? You know, just, I'm just saying, you don't need nobody like that, you know? And I'm your friend, man. I'm your friend. You don't need nobody like that in your life, man. You know, let her go. And uh, he doing all that knowing that he trying to get closer to your girl. He doing all that to get closer to your girl. You're not looking at the fucking signs. They out there. Let me tell you, when it comes to relationships, as a, see, see how complicated relationships are? See? See how I broke all that shit down? Now y'all probably saying that man, fuck this shit. That's what the relationship is about. I ain't mm -mm, fuck that. But that's what it takes. It takes a lot of strong heart because you're gonna deal with all type of shit that's gonna come your way. You're gonna be heart broke at some point. Somebody gonna break your heart. And Lord have mercy if you have your first love. The first love is always a motherfucker. Anybody who had a really first love, I'm talking about a really fucking first love. I ain't talking about no make-believe love. A, a hurting, a hurting. Um, let me tell you, I know. I know I experienced it. I really did. I really did. You know, a couple times. And it hurts. I mean, you know it hurts the first time, but God damn it, when it hurt, when it when it gets you the second time and shit, you already knew what the hurt was from the fucking beginning. Oh man! So I know what that that hurt is. I know. You know, I've been hurt and I've been destroyed. You know, early on, but I'm glad that shit happened to me early on because I learned from that shit. It's when you don't learn from hurt. That's when it's a problem. When you don't learn from hurt, it's going to fucking be a problem. I learn from hurt. If you ever get hurt in a relationship, listen, learn from it. Study it. Break it down like a fucking fraction. Learn from it. Don't be hurt. Learn from that shit. That's going to help you go further in life when another potential relationship come up. Because you sat there and you learn from the first time it's okay to be hurt but don't get it too twisted and shit and don't get too far removed from doing what you really need to do it's learn from that shit learn from that shit do not continue to be fucking hurt for a year two years three years fuck that You're wasting too much time learn from the hurt move the fuck on period because you only got one life. All of us have one fucking life. And I'd be damned if I'm going to live my life in some type of fucking hurt. Because I'm trying to, cause I'm trying to understand why somebody fucked me over. No. You fucked me over, now I got to learn from it. I got to learn why you fucked me over and shit. What happened? So I can dissect this shit. So if I ever get into another relationship or my next relationship, I got this shit broke down like a fucking fraction. I'm know what I'm knowing what to look for. So when you when you know what you're looking for in a mate, and you start talking to people, you know sometimes like-minded people think alike. You might be saying something that she said that she might have been thinking, or or vice versa. That shit happens like that, and then you can kind of move on. To the next step, because now you you see you can conversate. See, relationships breaks down like this. If you get with a person, y'all get together, 
Now, he always talking about cartoons and shit like that. And you're talking about business. But y'all still trying to hook up and be friends. And, you know, you kind of like him and shit because, you know, he got the 12 pack and shit. And, you know, and she got that coat bottle figure you're looking at and shit. But y'all not realizing that y'all are not really made for each other. Y'all just going for the physical. And that's the first thing you see when it comes to people in relationship. It's the physical. I get it. You see the physical. But I try to look past the physical. If I see somebody that I want to talk to, I'm going to try to look past the physical. I don't give a fuck what kind of body yo is. You got you can, you can be fine as fuck or you can be fat as hell. It don't matter. If I got a thing for you and shit, I'm trying to see what's happening with you. Everything there is a physical. I'm not worried about the physical. I know what to do. When it comes down to it, I know what to do with the physical. And I know how I'm going to handle the physical. I see already what I see. I know what I can possibly get out of this deal. But right now, that's the easy part. Let me go for the hard part. Let me learn this person. Let me see where this person is coming from. Let's see if we are on the same accord. Well, if I'm sitting here talking about cartoons and she's talking about business, that's not a match. That's not a match at all because we can't even communicate because we're on two different levels. But what do people like that end up doing? They end up getting together because of the physical. They got nothing in fucking common. Nothing. But if the sex is good on both ends, shit. That's all that matters to them. The, the sex is good on both ends. Then they get caught up in that shit. Now they, now they fucking the motherfucker who watched Bugs Bunny. It's bad enough that she was talking to him up when he was watching Bug Bunny from the beginning, but now you're fucking him. Now he got you up here watching Bug Bunny too, and you're in here trying to handle business. And people like that don't think sometimes. Next thing you know, boop, here come little Pookie. Now they got kids that shouldn't be here in the first damn place. They end up divorcing at some fucking point because she realized, let me go ahead and get what I really want out here, but she fucked up that much time over here, and vice versa. That shit works both ways. So, yeah, relationships are complicated. It's so much to a relationship that one must learn. It's more to, than just getting on the phone and say, what's up, girl? Yeah, man, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Shit, you know? Like, you know, you know, I think about you and shit, you know? Oh, yeah, I think about you too, shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, what you think about wanting to do today? You know, you know, getting this little something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't mind getting a little something. Shit, girl, come on, let's, yeah, let's do this. You know I've been wanting to do this. You know, shit, come on, man, why you playing? Shit, let's do this. Relationships are complicated. They are. Never let nobody tell you that relationships are not complicated. It's about knowing what you want. If you know you just want to just have some fucking fun and you don't want no more out the deal, if you're a man or a woman thinking like that, you know, let that person know straight fuck up what it is. You know, now now you're not going to no shit blindly now because you know already. This motherfucker just told me I just, he just want to fuck. You know, it was just, this is, I just want to be a fuck buddy. You know, he just told me. Now you got the option to say, yeah, when, that's what I want. That's or that's not what I want. If somebody tell you straight the fuck up what it is and what they want, listen. Sometimes they be saying it, but y'all just don't be listening. That's on man and woman side. They can be saying the shit, but some people are so fucked up in the head, they just not grasping what this person is actually really saying. Sometimes you gotta get harsh and say it a different way. You're just like gotta slap them a few times and shit. Now listen, motherfucker. <laughs> You know, just ugh, I feel like that was people sometimes. You know, you just have to be really careful. Like me, I was just me. Back in the day, I wasn't looking for nobody. I just wanted to, I knew what I fucking wanted to do. Shit, I tell you straight the fuck up. I, I, shit, I kept a short stay on standby. Shit, back in the day. Shit, we don't, I don't think they had short stays no more. But back in the day, you get a short stay pay for four hours and shit, shit, do what you gotta do and go home, shit, it's a win-win, it's a win-win, baby, well, that was back in the day, so, but I didn't make no, listen, I made no, 
exceptions. I, I let you know what, what I wanted. And I had a cool way of going about it. I didn't just, just come straight out like that. Give me the panty, girl. No, I had to be real cool with my shit because if you be cool with it and still let them know that this is what it is, oh, man, you can have a fucking great night. So, yeah, I know this story I told about the girl at the bus stop. Maybe some of you hadn't heard it. So, heard it. so if you're here for the first time, I tell a lot of stories on the Shea Show. Real talk. You know, things that happened in my life and, you know, over the years, you know, some things I just think is absolutely funny and hilarious. You know, I think back at it now, you know, so I get a chance to not only relive these stories, but bring you in on a journey with my stories. Okay, listen. It was summertime. It's like 75, 80 degrees outside. You know, it's really nice. You know, we ain't had no smog, none of that old shit back then. You know, just air was just like clean for some reason. You know, and I'm riding, I had a, a Mustang. And I was riding across um, Davidson and Livernois. I was kind of driving down Davidson, getting across Livernois. Anybody live in Detroit, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a DNL party liquor store on the corner right now, right there on the corner. It used to be a movie house back in the day. So anyway, so you got a flower shop right there that's been in business for like 60 years. I said, they got to be selling drugs out there, but for how the fuck are they just surviving on that corner of the hood selling flowers? They selling drugs. Everybody, that's a, run, that's a running thing over here. But anyway, there was a bus stop right beside the um, flower shop. And so I'm passing over, and at the corner, at the bus stop, it was the beautiful woman I had at the time I ever seen in my fucking life. I said, oh, my God. So instead of just pull over like most guys do, that, listen, guys, don't do that. You try to holler at a woman and shit. Some, they don't, women don't like to be hollered at from no fucking window and shit. You feel, that's the best you can do and shit. Just don't even, just keep driving. God damn. That's, that's crazy. I never, I, anyway, I seen this beautiful woman. So I'm driving. I said, fuck that shit. So next street, the Stopo and shit. I slowed down. I made my right. Urge. I stopped and I pulled. I looked in the fucking mirror, made sure my hair was nice and not out of place and shit you know just I, I had i used to travel with banaka in my car and shit you know it's like mouth washing the mouth spray and shit like i did a couple of sprays and shit to make sure my breath was like you know fresh because i'm getting ready to get out and talk to this girl fuck this shit I'm, I'm, i want this shit to be right you know so i walked back there and i said hey how you doing she said i'm doing all right i said how long you been waiting on the bus she said, it's been a while. This bus should have came. I said, what? I said, damn. I said, well, at least I didn't miss it. She said, you waiting on the bus too? Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting on the bus too. But you said it's been a while and shit. You know? So what's your name and shit, you know? And she told me her name. I told her my name and shit. We just got to talking and just chopping it up and stuff. I made her feel real at ease. She said, you got some, She said, you smell pretty good. What you got on? I said, oh, girl, and shit. You know, high karate and shit. You know, this you know, is good shit, you know. And so we're sitting there just talking and shit. And, you know, I just keep it real basic. I didn't say nothing about how. Uh, let's have sex and let's get together tonight. None of that bullshit. Just talking about the weather and and talking about just we're just talking about life and and how things is changing over the years since we've been whatever we was and where we grew up at. Just that, that basic shit, you know. And she said, "Oh, here come the bus." I said, "Oh yeah, cool, cool." And so the bus had stopped on the other side of the red light on the other side of Davidson Livernois. And so I said, well, let me go ahead and see what I got to say before this bus come over here. And so the light changed. I said, listen, I said, it was nice meeting you. It really was. I enjoyed the conversation. So I started walking off in anticipation of her saying something, which, which she did. And so she said, where are you going? And you waiting on the bus? I said, I ain't going to lie. I said, I, I I got a car right around the corner. I was riding across here, and I seen you, and I just thought you was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. And I just didn't want to approach you from a window because I don't think women like that kind of shit. So I figured I'd just come around here and just talk to you this way. She said, oh, my God, that is so sweet. Oh, my God, man, never did nothing like that before. I'm like, I know, fuck shit. I'm saying. And so I then I turned around and said, listen, 
if you want to ride, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, I got the car. You don't have to get on the bus. I mean, but, you know, it's up to you. I mean, I'm no, no, no rush. She said, yeah, that'd be nice. And so she came around. We walked to my car. I opened the fucking door and shit like a gentleman and shit. Let her get in. I got on the other side. Before I walked around, I said to myself, I said, I'm getting this ass night. And be, that's before I got in the car and shit. I just like, you know, I lined up. All right, shit. I put a target on her fucking back. And she fell for it. And so we got in the car and we just riding and shit. So I get back on Davidson going down 96 to Seven Mile. I said, where you stay at? She said, I stay on Seven Mile and Sunderland. So if you're here in Detroit, you know already you had to take from Davidson Freeway, you had to take 96 West, 96 West to Southfield. And then we get Southfield North. And you got to get off at Seven Mile from Southfield, get off the Seven Mile exit and make a right, excuse me, make a left and go across the, the freeway. You got that church's chicken sitting on on the right hand on the side on the corner. You go down five blocks and it's like Sunderland. So we ride. I said, yeah, I know what that is and shit. And so we started riding and I said, you know, I said, think, Shay, think you got to say something quick. You no, know, because, you know, we I'm going to slow down, slow the car down and shit, because if I get here too fast without me thinking about what I want to do, because I, I need to get this too tight. So I got to make this right. So I slowed down a little bit. She, she said, you driving like little mid Daisy. I said, I drive kind of slow. You know, just I like to ride, you know. She said, oh, yeah, I understand. I understand that. So I said, I said, so, hey, I said, fuck, I went broke. I said, say, hey, so what you doing the rest of the evening? He said, oh, I ain't doing nothing. Just going to rest. I said, well, listen, listen, he, listen here. I said, why don't I come back and pick you up? And we can go to the park. You know, we can go back to Palmer Park and walk around, look at the ducks and shit. You know? And she said, yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. I said, well, what time should I pick you up? She said, she said, you can pick me up about six, six, about six o'clock. It was summertime. It's still nice outside. I said, okay. So I left. So as soon as she got out of the car, I looked at her walking away. I said, mm, 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 mm. So you're going to get mango tonight. <laughs> Ooh, my God. So I turned off and I go. I couldn't wait for fucking six o'clock and shit. So I headed back over that way about 5, 40, 45. And I pulled up, got there a little early. I didn't want to seem like I wanted to get there too fucking fast. I didn't want to seem anxious and shit. I didn't want to be, you know, do a black, that nigga shit and, and, and be an hour late and shit. You know, you know how we do sometimes. But anyway, I just, I found that in between time. So I got back over there, you know, and hit the form. And she come out. Oh, my God. She had a fucking halter top on. She had a big old afro that was re-picked out and coned. I mean, this motherfucker looked like Angela Davis. And she had some kulaks on. I said, ooh, wee. Oh, my fucking God. Wow, oh, before every step she, every time she stepped to walk to go towards the car, and I'm looking, I said, I was saying, saying some crazy shit. I'm mad, man, I'm going to tear your ass up. Oh, you just don't fucking know. And then grab my teeth. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I just maintain yourself because when you get in there, you're going to rip her ass apart. And she, oh, you're just going to do your, you're going to do it. And that's where my mind was. So you got in the car, I said, you look nice. You look really, you know, I had to play this shit off. I said all that other shit before I got in. Anyway, I said, man, you look nice. And she said, thank you. You look really nice too. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, you looking good, girl. Damn. Then I did go there. I said, I said, you looking good, girl. Damn, I had to let her know that I'm 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 looking looking, you know? I like I said, you looking good. Damn, fuck. Shit. Mm. She said, I look that good. I said, fuck yeah. Fuck you know, girl, you know you looking all like that. Why are you fucking with a motherfucker? You know? Damn. Let's take off. So we take off. And we just drive and drive. So we went we went to uh Palmer Park. So anybody know about Palmer Park? Now, back then, it was like more of a family park back then. But now, you go to Palmer Park now, and I ain't got nothing against the gay people. That's who they, that's who they are. You know, on the small parking lot, it's known where all, you know, the gay folks hang out. And then if you go to the big parking lot, that's kind of like where all the regular people hang out. So, 
Did I say regular people? I'm sorry. That's what that's where other people hang out who is not really like gay. So back then it was like family park. So anyway. And so I pulled up and I parked. We got out the car and shit. We started walking and just just like I said on fucking time, here could them fucking ducks. I could I said earlier, I said we can go watch the power park and watch the ducks and shit. So we got we walked through that little trail and had like five or six ducks trying to walk across us and shit, you know. It's like it was on cue and shit. I looked at the main duck, yeah, I got you, dog, I got you. This way I set this shit up. So the little duck family they went on about their business. And we got to walking around the park a little bit. Then we sat down on the fucking bench. Then we just started having that regular conversation. It was really great. I said, it's going real good. Remember, I told her we were going to dinner, too. I didn't know where the fuck I was going. It's just like, I want to just, I figured it out when I got in the damn car. I just, I, you know. <laughs> anyway, so the if little time was going by, then she said, she said, so are we going to eat? I said, oh, don't worry about that. I got that. I got you. you said, oh, it's going to be a surprise. She said, are you full of surprises? I said to myself, yeah, the fuck I am. I don't know where the fuck we going. Then I didn't. So she said, then she said, well, I'm kind of getting hungry. I said, God damn it. I figured you would. I said, well, come on. Fuck it. So we go back to the car. I'm waiting for the ducks to come back and make one last appearance and shit. Don't make a fucking total fool out of me and shit. But they didn't. They was in the water just fucking off somewhere else and shit, but it's okay. So we get back in the car, and I start the car, so I backed out of the parking lot. And I commenced to drive, and let me see, it's a McDonald's down there, it's an L. George's Coney Island, uh, right there on the corner of uh, uh, Hamilton, which is still there. Uh, is this? I well, I said, where, 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 where you going? I said, I'm telling you, just surprise. I'm just driving. Just, we just enjoy it. Shut up, bitch. You know, we just we chilling right now. About to go take us there, and I make this turn on fucking Six Mile, and there's this restaurant sitting on the side. I said, right there, that's where I go. Right there. She said, we go right there. I said, yeah, I do. It's called Minjo's. I didn't know shit about men's. All I seen was major D people parking people's cars and people's going in. I said, this place looks nice and shit. This is the place for you. Yep, so we pull in and shit. She said, you go here, huh? I said, oh, yeah, all the time. Shit, you know? Guy came out to get ready to park the car and shit. I gave the motherfucker a quarter, 50 cents, some shit like that. And I said, come on, girl. You know, shit. Let the lights fan dangle tonight. Fuck this, man. I just tipped the motherfucker 50 cents. So we go in and the lights is like, like dim and shit. And so motherfucker said, what you? the table, they walked back at the table way in the fucking back and shit. And they, okay, but it was still dim. It was still early. It wasn't a really lot of people in there. So I wasn't thinking shit. So. I'm looking at the fucking man. Here come the um the wait waiter guy. You know, he seemed kind of anyway. So he came over here, gave us the menus and walked off. And so I'm looking at the menu and said, What the fuck? Squid? Shark? Alligator? What the fuck is this? National GF graphics menu? What is this? And I realized I said, Oh Lord, I said, I'm in one of them places. Shit. I mean, God damn, you know, anytime, anytime you go in a fucking restaurant and they got a whole bunch of animals from Africa and that on that motherfucker so in the deep sea, you know you fought to pay some shit. You just know it. And so she's like, I'm looking at the menu. She's looking at the menu. I'm hoping she say she allergic to all this shit, right? And we go to McDonald's and we get the fuck out of here, right? And so I'm sitting here looking at the menu again. I said, let me see if I can see. Let me see what bread and water cost this motherfucker, right? I'm just looking. And she said, I heard her say, so you come here all the time? I said, oh, yeah, fucking yeah. I was just here fucking two days ago. What the fuck? You know, this is my joint and shit, you know? She said, I heard her say, oh, and I never looked up because I still look at this fucking menu. It's fucking me up. It's like, I heard her say, oh. And something about the way she fucking said, oh. I said, hmm. And I opened up, raised my head up, and looked out the floor. There were two guys dancing and kissing. I said, what the fuck? I looked over to a booth over in the fucking corner. There's other two guys over there hugged up, holding hands. I said, oh, my God. I'm in a fucking gay bar. I didn't fucking know. I had no idea Mendel was a fucking gay bar. I swear to God. And I was like, 
I was so fucking embarrassed. I just told this motherfucker I was here two days ago. I said, no, we got to go. We got to go. And she said, why? She said, it seemed like a nice place. No, nah, fuck that. It ain't a nice. I said, listen, I lied to you. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Uh, I've never been here in my fucking life. i never even seen this goddamn place. When we was riding around and you said you was hungry and shit, like, shit, what a nigga supposed to do? I mean, I'm supposed to do something and shit. You said, you know, I wasn't going to take you to fucking McDonald's. This is the first time we going out and shit. So I got to make some type of goddamn impression. So you got to give me that. I mean, damn, look, look at the way I met you this morning. I parked around the corner, walked back and shit. I mean, don't they tell you something about me? I mean, I was just going on. I was just trying to find an excuse to get the fuck up out of there, right? And she said, well, if you, if you uncomfortable, you know, just we, we can leave. I said, yeah, yeah, fuck, I'm uncomfortable with this shit. Because I was just trying to impress you and shit. It just didn't, well, I was uncomfortable. I just, I had limited money in my pocket that day. I, I know it. And it didn't, and my money didn't say swordfish and didn't say fucking alligator. It just, it said something between McDonald's and Arby's, what it fucking said. But, you know, we made it work. We walked out and we ended up getting something that was getting a little late and shit. So, you know, she just kind of like sell for like a sandwich, some fucking weird, just like the way it's supposed to have been. So it worked out, right? And so I said, damn. I said, yeah, it's going to be getting a little late soon. She said, yeah, I think I should be. we should be getting back. And I said to myself, oh, no, the fuck you don't. I planned this shit. I spent all fucking day. I spent fucking like at least $15 for us to eat and to whatever the fuck it was. Maybe 17 So, yeah, I mean, mm, you ain't getting off the hook this goddamn easy shit. I don't got you this man shit. They just kicked me out the players club and shit if I, did, if I fuck this one up tonight. Because I would have to tell it when I go back. I had to go back to the Pimp Legion of Doom and shit like, hey, listen, this is what happened. You don't know, always, nah, man, but we got cameras on your ass. We seen what you did. So I just said, well, listen here. We sh- maybe go back to, to the pad, you know, and watch a little TV, you know, go back to my pad and watch TV, you know. You know, just kick it for a little while, you know. And night is still kind of young. You know, I'm really enjoying your company and shit. You know, just go watch TV. I had to emphasize that, again, watch TV and see where her head was coming from. She said, okay, that sounds good. And so I'm riding, I'm riding. So I said, hold on for a minute. We had phone booths back then, right? So <laughs> so I went to a phone booth and I called Maurice. Maurice stayed at the penthouse apartments on Seven Mile in Greenfield. They're still there, but it's called something else now. And he worked at Shabby Gear and Axel on Holbrook and Ham Traffic. So he worked at like, it's like midnight slash afternoon slash midnights. And he left early. So I called him and said, listen, bro, I got one to go. Whenever I said that, he already knew. He said, hey, man, the kid's under, under the mat and shit. I said, okay. He said, well, I'll probably be gone by the time y'all get here. I said, yeah, man, I'll give you a little time to get out of there, man. But, you know, I'm on my way. I'll be there in about 25 minutes. I got to ride around a little bit more and warm a little bit. I got I to gotta primer, bro. I ain't finished priming her and shit. So give me 25 minutes. I should be good. So he said, all right, man. And so I finally get there. I said, come on in, goddamn shit. You know, and shit. And so I'm going to get out, you know. And so he came in and I hit this light. Cause Reese had these fucking mood lights and shit. He turned the fucking lights on and shit. Like the strobe light going around and red, green, and orange. Different colors and shit. Oh, it's so nice here. Mm-hmm. That's what we do, you know. Sitting there just talking and stuff. So I'm sitting here talking and just talking and talking. Turned the TV on. I forgot what the fuck was on and shit. Cause then he didn't care at that fucking point. I got her in the fucking house. That's <sighs> next step, the bedroom. If we can get there, right? We got there. But anyway, so I said, hmm, think Shay, think Shay. You don't wanna you don't want her to come up with something and say this is boring that I think I'd rather go home. Shit. You don't you don't give a woman time to think. When you're trying to get the poon handy, you don't you can't let her think because you let a woman think and shit, it's over. You ain't getting none. You gotta be quick on the fucking draw when it comes to a woman and trying to get something. Shit. I'm trying to tell you guys something. So I said, listen here. I said, I really entertain in my back room, you know, in the bedroom. That's you know, some people 
Yeah, some people do that, you know. So that's why I entertain that, you know. So I got TV back there and shit, you know. Just, so, so once you, you don't mind, just come on back here, you know, just be comfortable, you know. Because, you know, just watch TV. Just, just what I kind of do, you know what I'm saying? In my bedroom, I had to keep saying that shit. She said, well, listen, you ain't got to keep saying this. We can go. I said, okay, I'm just saying. I'm just making sure, God damn it, you know, shit. I'm trying to get you back here, shit. It's like 1030. <laughs> You know, you get they start getting yawning and quiet at a certain time. Little woman start yawning and shit before you try to get some. It's fucking a wrap. You ain't getting shit. Let 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 her ass yawn one fucking time. You ain't getting nothing. Woman, she letting you know right now. You had your chance. I've been ready for like 30, 40 fucking minutes. You sitting there fucking around. I'm here. So now you don't you don't want to do all that, and so I stretch and put my arm around her. TV was on, and Maurice had this big ass fucking water bed. I remember when he got that muffin. We took a water hose and filled that big motherfucker. It was king. It was like double king size. That was the biggest fucking uh, water bed I have ever fucking seen. It took us forever to fill that goddamn thing up. So we sitting there. She, oh, this is a nice water bed. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you know it's, it's got this motion, of, and I just sat down a little bit, and then it sent a wave, a shock wave down next to her, and, and it just made it, it come back when the water come up, just like it lifted her up and hit her right next to her, made her land on me and shit, like, yeah, you know, I hit a wave just right, you know, you just gotta know when to be at the water bed, put my arm around her and stuff, and, and I'm like, fuck it, and I just started, you know, I started kissing her on the ear and shit, and then I said, Either one or two things gonna happen. She gonna moan or groan, or she gonna just really get into it, or she gonna say, "Don't do that." Well, I'm hoping she say, "Don't do that," but she didn't. So I got to doing that. All of a sudden, she just like she she just started taking her shit off, like dancing, even in the fucking dark. You know, so I even had to tuck her out of them and shit. I guess she was ready too. So she took her shit off, and I took my shit off, and and like man, it was on, baby. I mean, I was jungle gymming and I was doing a trapeze, triple somersault off the fucking ceiling sideways and and judges on the side saying 10, God damn it. I mean, I was doing everything that I had to fucking do. Oh, my God damn. I should have been in the sex Olympics. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. It's just, I would have had so many goddamn gold medals and shit. I would have just got to weigh down. I was doing all that. I was doing shit that the average human being just don't even think it's possible to do. All of this. And she wasn't moving. I said, wait a minute. Something wrong. I'm doing everything known to fucking man and outside of fucking earth. I'm moving fucking mountains and she's just sitting here. I'm doing all this, and she just like, huh? Then at one point, she reached over. She had a pack of cool cigarettes sitting on the, on the table. Do you mind if I smoke? No, the fuck you didn't say, do you mind if I fucking smoke? I'm sitting here doing all this shit. Then I thought I was fucking really doing something. And so I started to back off a little bit. She let me keep going. But I said, abort. Abort. <laughs> Abort. Come up with something quick, Shane. Think. You've been thinking all my fucking day. I said, oh, shit. Mm, mm. She said, what's wrong? I said, my head. My head hurt like a motherfucker. Mm, mm, mm. Whew. When that started, oh, shit, girl. Shit, about three hours ago. You know, when we was at that, uh, that restaurant and shit, you know, that shit kind of threw me and shit. And this, that shit kind of traumatized me and shit. And I didn't want to say nothing to you about it. You know, just, really? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because, you know, but this, well, I'm, that's why my game is off right now. You know, just, you know, I mean, I can really do some shit. You know, that that shit I did there, man, was, it wasn't nothing. You know, this average shit, you know. I know you I know you realize that. You know, you don't have to say it. I mean, I just kind of realized you was kind of like, <sighs> not into it, you know, but it's okay because, you know, if we ever get together again, I mean, I'll show you the A game, girl. You know, just right now, I just got a headache. And she said, you know, don't be mad at yourself. She said, you didn't do nothing. She said, you're actually good. She said, but 
I'm just going to be honest with you. She said, I'm gay. I said, I beg your pardon? Said, I'm gay. I don't even like men. I said, I'll be damned. So it was you. I mean, any other normal woman would have broke under that damn pressure. Trust me, would have been sitting here washing dishes for the rest of their life of me. But uh, I said, wow. She said, well, I hope you're not under not mad. I said, no, 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 not at all. And I said, but I do have a question for you. She said, what's that? I said, if you don't like men, and you like women, and you're gay, I said, why did you go out with me? Why did you even have, well, I guess, sex with me? She said, you know why? She said, because even though I'm gay, she said, I'm still a woman. And every now, not all, not all gay women, but at least for me, every now and then I want to be reminded of that, even though I like something else. Because I'm still a woman. I was made a woman. And I still got feelings. And she kept that shit 100. She said, no. She said, I'll probably never do this shit again. If I do it again, it might be another five, ten years, if that. But she said, I just wanted to feel a certain way. When you got out of the car and you, you walked around and you talked to me, she said, you just reminded me what a, what a man is, what a man supposed to be. And she said, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, enjoyed your conversation. I enjoyed your company. I enjoyed being with you. She said, I enjoyed being here doing, doing this with you, even 